Oh, I could, yeah. Yeah. So basically, um, as you guys know, our Picoscope, the oh. imp, the one Wait, of the probes here. is oh sorry. One of the probes is connected to our uh, audio input, and the other one is connected to our DAC, which Eight. is our audio output. So. Um, Does it work? This works, right? I think it works. Okay. Uh, and I have this here. And you can just like press the button. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Yeah. And it <laughs> sounds cool. best with one note pressed at a time. When I start pressing two at a time, it doesn't sound as good. Um, yeah, I'm guessing just because like overlaps of like frequencies or something like that, um, might be, uh, I'm not like hundred percent sure, but it's like one, two, like yeah, that, so it that's sounds, like scary. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> a, like that's growling. a two at a time. And it gets worse with like more notes. Um, yeah. we found that we can like <clears throat> press like six keys at a time. We have like the infrastructure to press 13 keys, but uh it, it after six keys it, it just like yeah. gets really weird oh the other issue that we really ran into was being able to like scale our output correctly after we've done calculations and so like one thing is the uh, carrier signal that we have saved is basically yeah. normalized to between zero and one um and so like we also did that in python where we like basically said we want these samples from the uh, audio, found the minimum, apply that as the offset, and then found the maximum, and then scaled it. And then like basically copy and pasted the output and put it into our file. Um, and the reason why we did this was so that we basically knew, I guess, like what to expect coming out of the computation. Um, we ended up doing it so that the ADC input is like unscaled and this thing is is scaled so this thing is scaled between zero and one and our adc is unscaled so it's between zero and 1024 and then when we multiply it like basically makes it within that range of like zero zero and 1024 or 1023 actually um and so then knowing that then we were able to like scale it appropriately yeah uh, yeah we also ran into the memory Oh yeah, we ran into some issues with memory where we like first, we like when we tried to take too many samples, we weren't able to actually upload the program, obviously. And then the other thing was when we were like really close to the maximum memory allocated, um, we found that we were like processing things slower. Like when we were at like, was it like 95% like capacity or whatever, we found that like no, the it's, it just output didn't... wasn't it just like didn't work really well yeah the reason is because yeah. we like didn't have enough like ram to basically like do our computations yeah so, so right the, now only, like, the hmm? only thing that's dynamic in ram is the stack yeah, yeah. so yeah. um like before we had so i i, yeah. I don't know if like it was what, yeah, like, two, a few days ago uh, before we had this as a float, right? So we had it as a float. We had just had like the value between zero and one. And then um, in our main, where is it? In our main, we would like generate the uh, carrier signal using the uh, float to fix function. And then this basically like doubled how much um, memory we would need on the stack because all of this would be, you know, um, what is it called? Like, dynamically allocated and runtime, right? Um, well, so then, well it, it, wait a minute, where did you de declare a carrier? Here. That's a that's a global, yes? Yes. It's not dynamic. Oh. It's static at, at, at compile time. Yeah, but like, basically like the issue that we were running into was just that like, if we had like two copies of the same array basically, right? One of them we never used except for in the beginning. We weren't able to store as many samples. Which so we ended up finding that we needed in order to make the sound like richer, right? Because we so we listened to like a bunch of like short snippets of the carrier signal, and if it wasn't long enough, you couldn't hear like. Sure. 
but to hear like the fullness of those sound sure so the, if this was a, a fixed array was there a reason why you didn't put it in flash well we okay so we also did put it in flash okay we, we use like cons to put it in flash but mm -hmm. it didn't actually change anything yeah didn't actually change memory use yeah like when we uploaded it using uh the I, like the ide like we saw that like the percentage used was like the same well hmm. uh did you know, with that with that like dashboard that you guys talked about like yeah. we saw that it was like the same percentage after did you did you also declare a, a an array in ram then also uh what do you what do you uh, mean so be, so it looked to me like i mean that stuff you commented out there modifies the carrier array and you well, can't, so, you so can't do that for a flash array right? well right but it's commented out right so like basically this so i don't know if you're looking carefully but like the line says it mod it does it modifies carrier but it references float carrier which has never changed so, so we tried putting float carrier in flash by doing like a const float float carrier array and just modifying this carrier array here and it didn't work well like that, it didn't save us any memory well that's because you declared a, a separate carrier array in ram well right but like otherwise there would be two arrays in ram do you see what i'm saying like you sh it should have like yeah yeah so i don't know so basically then instead of doing that we just decided to define the one array that we were defining in float i'm sorry in fixed point in sure fixed. but why didn't you put the fixed point array in flash because we saw that it didn't work earlier i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um we could try it now I, no i don't know don't try it now okay but yeah, so basically we can press like multiple keys to make chords. And then when we talk, it mod modifies the sound. When we don't press any keys, there's no sound. So when you when you say you're pressing multiple keys, this is on the on the PC keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, like show it's yeah. Like, I don't know, like I'll just oh. like I'll just like hold this and then I'll press a key or something. I mean sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, oh yeah, you're not. Yeah, oh not yeah, now no, she's not pressing anything. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, is that one five. not mapped to anything? Oh, so it's like starts. So it's basically a map to like a piano keyboard starting from A. Uh huh. It's sort of an sort of an auto tuning effect. Yeah. So each each of the um. Each of the keys is like at like one frequency, right? So, well, yeah. So basically, each key is mapped to an offset, and then basically that offset dictates how fast through that carrier signal array that we have goes through. Right. What, what does a simultaneous key press mean on a keyboard? Um, that makes a chord. Yeah. Right. So you're pressing. No, no, I, mean, I mean, I didn't even think that would work with a keyboard. Uh, so the, the way I'm doing it is in Python, uh, I'm using like a keyboard listener, um, which is basically like a separate thread that listens for keyboard inputs. Uh, and basically I have it so that um, the events are separated into uh, like, um, like, yeah, ups and downs. So when you press something down, it triggers an event. And when you lift it up, it uh, triggers another event. And then I only send those events to um, the, the pick. I see. So that okay. if you have a bunch of press events and no release events, then you know that all those keys are pressed. Yes. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I can like do, I can like demonstrate with like four. Well, why don't you do it like one at a time? So like you can do the events. Okay. Yeah. So this is just one. One. Oh, actually, let me go higher. Yeah, go higher. One, two, three. Oh, this is going to be with two. One, two. Three, and then with three, two, three, and with four, two, three, four. Now this is five, but it just it sounds like worse and worse. 
It, it gets harder to understand. Yeah. And then I guess the six. Can we go even more? Like if you look at the, the the Python window, I have like number of keys pressed um, on the serial printout. I see. Yeah. I guess it doesn't go any higher than six. I think. <laughs> Okay, could oh, you could, could you do this again, but with you yourself muted, so we don't hear your actual voice? But okay. then the pick won't hear it either. I think, right? Yeah. Oh. Then the pick oh. won't hear. Never. Oh, because this is all going over Zoom. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you could do it with. You could play audio on the lab PC. Yeah. That the pick would hear and then speak. That is true. I can do like a. Oh, you're at, um, just play like an audiobook or something. Audiobook? There's like YouTube, like, like giving tree, like audio. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay, oh. yeah. Which is 1.2 million views. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I'll bet that's music. I think that they're actually talking. Yeah. But we probably don't have like good enough filtering to like hear individual speech. I mean, the other thing also, that we found too is that like you need to talk pretty slowly for it to like sound like for you to like hear the actual word that's being said. Because like we tried playing basically like a podcast into the audio and like yeah. it just sounded like what it just sounded like. Like it just can you try like in the YouTube settings? Can you try slowing down the video to maybe 0.5 speed? Yeah, I mean, like one thing is, um, so like audio or like um, like speech basically has like frequency range all the way up until what is it, four thousand? Well, okay, or the so majority of the like frequency information goes up to around like four thousand hertz, right? And like when they like, I guess uh, some of the most important frequencies are actually in the two thousand hertz range because that's all of the. Uh, the consonant sounds all like the s and the t. Can I share Those, my screen? Yeah, you can show your screen. Um, but for us, actually, we're, like, we're, we're how do we stop out here? Um, we end up filtering those out. Right. Well, okay. So basically, we found this article on speech intelligibility, and essentially, they like did. There's also like a ton of documentation on like the probabilistic like nature i guess of speech and like how likely it is to find it in certain fre frequency bands based on like what words and stuff are like most common but basically like this is like kind of the histogram that we like based our our like design off of so it says that the important frequencies are around two kilohertz but we were like so basically not sampling at like four kilohertz we're losing a lot of intelligibility right like because basically like a lot of stuff in this bucket is like tossed out. Okay. So like we get like this stuff and below, but like at 1.5 kilohertz, like we don't know what fraction of this like band we get. If we were sampling at like four kilohertz, it's likely that it would be more perceptible as to like what people were saying, but like we still lose out on like this band. So like with our eight kilohertz sampling, right? Like this was like, we got most of it. It, re it reminds me very much of like when there's a conversation happening in the next room and the wall is low pass yeah. filtering and yeah. you, can, you, you can hear the voices and you can't quite understand what they're saying. You can often get the mood, but not what's being said. Right. Yeah. 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 Sam, did you, do you have any kind of anti-aliasing filter on this? No. <laughs> okay. So, so it's even worse than, than not having anything above 1.5 kilohertz because everything above that, above three or above one and a half then is reflected back down to lower frequencies. Yeah, like yeah. if it's like a harmonic, right? It's worse because it's oh. it's inverted in order. So you don't have the low pass. Mm. Let's do it, yeah. 
That's oh, I didn't, I didn't think about that. Actually. Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty late decision to change our sampling yeah. frequency. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it does right. something interesting. It, it, it does it, something interesting. Yes. Like, and yeah, it, so if, you, if you like talk like slowly, like, like John's like one, two, three, like. Yeah, that is, that is intelligible. I could understand the counting. It's just that like, once you like speed up anybody's speech, it's just like stuff starts to blur together and then it's yeah. hard to tell like the difference between words. Did you find uh, that your voice or John's voice was more or less intelligible than the other? With a, I imagine yours, Nicole, has a slightly higher fundamental. Yeah, I think that mine, so it depends on like what keys are being pressed. Yeah. It's almost like at like the lower keys, like John's voice is clearer and mine isn't. And then like at the higher keys, like my voice is like more intelligible. So like, that's why like, so sometimes like when, I don't know if you guys can hear like the audio that John is speaking in here, but like sometimes like he'll like try to like pitch match whatever like the key is saying. So that like it's more intelligible. <laughs> it's like one, two, three. <laughs> but yeah. Mm -hmm. Um the fact that it doesn't sound awful was very difficult to <laughs> come to fruition. <laughs> Most of it sounded really bad. Yeah, especially with the like we had another sample that we were using, not like this cosmic wave one. I think like the the other sample had yeah the fat basing okay yeah. yeah so basically like the fat basing what it looks like this but then like when you like zoom into it it's basically just this like it's basically just a triangle wave and like this it didn't have i mean maybe we also weren't grabbing enough samples we only grabbed yeah. like 600 samples but versus now we're grabbing like 6200 samples but we found that like this wasn't sufficient to it wasn't sufficient enough frequency content to carry like the actual amplitude zero modulator signal. Oh, I believe that because that's that's a fairly narrow bandwidth signal, right? That's yeah. yeah. The uh, it has mostly odd harmonics that drop off as one over n squared. There was a time when we also were okay. I guess it's no longer, but we also um, were visualizing the spectrograms of like some of our like filtered speech and our speech and the sound. Mm -hmm. um, and the sound that we ended up using had like a ton of. It was basically just like it looked like salt and pepper noise basically on the spectrogram. It was like there was like a little bit of everything, and nothing was like really strong, but nothing was like not there either yeah um, right the other thing too that was cool was like when you look at like human speech it's like very clear to see like where the harmonics are like there are very like clearly like lines that like go up and down together um so that was kind of cool mm -hmm. nice well we, yeah we, we, don't have it anymore. we don't have it anymore but we'll clean up this notebook <laughs> <laughs> and then you can see like the spectrograms and stuff yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I don't know what our data is anymore. Yeah. <coughs> but yeah, that's that's our project. Awesome. Awesome. Big questions. Well, that was that was a lot of debugging. Indeed. A lot of arithmetic to get running. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, it's hard to like wrap our head around the filtering stuff for a while. Okay. Cool. I think I already asked all the questions I had. So, uh, Same for thank, me. thank you very much.